Hello. <laughs> okay, so I am here to teach you how to play the oboe. So the first step is learning how to assemble the instrument. So this is the bell. I recognize that word. <laughs> yep. Uh, this is the uh, middle joint, or the lower joint is another name for it. And then this is the upper joint. And so what you're going to want to do is attach the bell to the lower joint. And see this little key that's right here? A way to make sure that it doesn't, I have this on the wrong way. The, the, the way to make sure that uh, the, the, the rods are what these are called, uh, uh, the, ma the way to make sure that these don't get bent is you press this key and then you gently with the rods, it, you put pressure on the rods. You don't, you don't like put pressure on the keys when you're uh, twisting this on. Uh, you want to gently twist it into place and keep the key pressed so that when it locks in, it should lock in like that. Do you want to give that a shot here? Yeah. Yeah. Press this one and just kind of wiggle around there. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to make sure that's all the way in. Yeah. Right. Cool. And so this, uh, and so what you're going to want to do with this is you're going to connect it. This one's a little bit trickier because there are two points to attach it to. So you can just kind of twist it on. And there are two points to match it up to. So. Oh. <laughs> Our clarinet has like only one total, so this is a little bit more complicated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make sure that's all the way in. Yeah, I was just making sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. That looks about right. Yep. Okay. So then this is the reed. And before we uh, put the reed on the instrument, uh, before playing, we always soak the reed. So this is a reed soaker. It's basically, you can just get a just like a, 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 basically a shot glass or whatever you want. And so this uh, should soak in here for uh, three to five minutes uh, before playing. Um, probably should have done that first. <laughs> um, so, so how you store the reeds is you want to, uh, They'll usually come in a tube like this, um, and uh, usually the tube, uh, like this tube did not come with a hole in the top. Uh, when I was home earlier, I poked a hole in the top with a needle and a safety pin. Uh, and you're gonna want to do that uh, if it doesn't already have that because uh, the hole will allow any moisture that's on the reed to escape so that it doesn't get moldy. Uh, it wouldn't be nice if something was Yeah, out. no. <laughs> um, yeah, these are also very expensive too. They um, generally like $20, and you buy just a reed, and it's $20. That's awesome. <laughs> I always hear my, uh, my bassoon friends talking about how they have to like have their reeds like handmade. So yeah, like usually they're, uh, usually the best reeds are handmade, but, uh, but a lot of the student models have machine-made reeds, so yeah. A lot of oboists actually make their own reeds too, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, how many minutes has it been? I don't even know. Um, um, I, mean, I, check. 
I'm gonna guess it's been like a minute and a half to two minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> we might have to fix the serenity. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shall we just have a have a time lapse section here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um I can practice putting together the instrument again. Oh yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, do we want to cut? We'll cut it out in editing. We'll cut it oh out. Oh my god. Ah! Okay. Alright. I think we really are. <laughs> Alright. So, let's, let's, let's learn how to put this thing away, I guess. Oh, yeah? And then I can just close it out. So. Oh, I should probably have a missing camera. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that this just kind of. Yeah. I'm scared to grab anyone. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I I was kinda just kinda just kinda go for it. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna yeah, I was bad. nervous, yeah. So this goes So it goes Oh, I got it. It goes here. And so yeah, the small end goes there. So the bell, you want to, yep, the key goes on the outside, and then that goes that like that, yep. And so when the reed is put back, it, it goes here. Sometimes I've been putting it in here, but it apparently it's supposed to go there. So that's Makes where sense. that goes. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Put this back together, I guess. Yeah. Give it another shot, and then I think that should be enough time. Oh, yeah, I was going to talk. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and a thing about the oboe reed is you're going to want to soak it, um, like, the whole part of the cane. So this, this woody part is the cane, and then the thread is what holds it to, what attaches it to the, the cork tube here. Uh, you're gonna, when you soak the reed, you're going to want to make sure that all of the cane is, uh, in, uh, is submerged in the water. Uh, yeah. And prior to, uh, coming here, I, uh, I, uh, sanitized this with, uh, hydrogen peroxide, so it should be good. Um, yeah. Probably been enough time. Yeah. Okay. And so, you're gonna wanna twist the thing, uh, and make sure it's, uh, in all the way. All the way? Yeah. Didn't know what the reference point was for that. And you're going to want to make sure that, yeah, it's lined up, the edges are lined up with the key for, yeah. So that goes like there, so that would be like that. Yeah, something, something like that, yeah. That's hard. Are you, are you <laughs> sure it goes in all the way? Yeah, it does, it goes in all the way. It should be, it should be, it, there's a point, yeah, no. That's as far, when it, as far in as it goes. Yeah, as far as, in it, as it goes. Yeah, I should have, yeah. It should be good. If it, <laughs> it should be good. Gotta line it up perfectly. Okay. okay. <laughs> Alright, that's probably good. Alright. So, an oboe. Yes. I forgot, uh, breathing. We should have maybe done that a little bit previously. <laughs> Okay, so breathing when playing the oboe utilizes the lungs, of course, but it also requires the use of the diaphragm, the rib cage, and the uh, abdominal wall muscles. Uh, so there are different ways to breathe. Uh, there's like the lower uh, breathing from the lower lungs is moving the abdominal wall outwards. So like, big belly. You should yeah. And then the middle is if you put your your hands 
around your rib cage, the lower rib cage should expand outward. And then the upper part is where the upper rib cage and the sternum, you know where that is, like right here, expands outward, but you don't want your shoulders to raise as you're Yeah, and so using a combination of, of some of them or all of them is what constitutes like a really good breath for, yeah. 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 Okay, so when, uh, when you're breathing for the oboe, you wanna, do you wanna, okay, you wanna make sure that you're uh, when you inhale for a breath, you want to make sure that you're inhaling with your mouth and not with your nose because you can't really do a complete full breath just through your nose. Um, yeah. All right. I stop, I stop looking at me. <laughs> so you actually have... Okay. Yep, you actually are right on the... right on the keys. Yep. So yeah, so the three main keys right here for the left hand, and then the, and just gently, yep, you have a, yeah, all, yep, you're right there. So the, the thumb on the right hand is underneath the thumb rest. You are way ahead of me. Yeah, I mean, cool. it's, it's just kind of the same as a clarinet, except yeah. more spread out. Yeah, well, you want to make sure that your fingers are, that your fingers are curved and, and Cool. All right. So, so for posture, you want to make sure these chairs are kind of weird, but uh, uh, but you want to sit forward, uh, and you want to make sure that your uh, your upper body should be slightly protruding forward uh, for the best posture in the back, straight, the head erect, and um, and the feet, yep, should be flat on the floor. Cool. And so. Yep. Okay. So, embouchure. Oh boy. Yep. Okay. I wish I had another read because that would be a lot easier. <laughs> um, so basically, um, have you ever like pretended to be an old man or whatever, and you have like dentures and whatever? Yep. And oh, it's oh, very much like that. <laughs> um. Let's actually try doing it with just the reed. So yeah, you wanna, yep, okay. So, uh, so yeah. And um, you wanna, you wanna, the curling the lips inward provides a cushion for the, for the reed so that you don't uh, touch it with your teeth. Um, and you wanna make sure, yeah, and you wanna make sure that the, um, that the corners of your, of your mouth are, are firm, but the center of your lips is, is relaxed, um, much like playing a brass instrument. Um, and uh, when you're playing the oboe, uh, the oral cavity, which is like the inside of your mouth, uh, should be like open, like, uh, like uh, yawning with a closed mouth. If you're like, yeah, crawl. Uh, do you wanna try? Uh, uh, playing on the reed and seeing what comes up. Okay. You can start. Um. You want to make sure that it's. But maybe it hasn't been soaking in for that long. I don't know. You want to blow like harder. Try blowing on like the more the tip of the reed. Be a bit tighter than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get used to it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, there we go. And as you get more comfortable with it, you want to make sure that you're that you have flexibility in your embouchure. So, 
Yeah. Cool. So now maybe we should put it back into the oboe. See if I can actually make an oboe to make noises. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so basically the beginning of any note that's played on the oboe is not so if you've ever heard uh, brass uh, players say, oh, you need to start every note with the tongue. Uh, that's true to some extent, but it's not the tongue that causes the start of the note. It's the release of the tongue followed by the air stream. So the air stream starts the tone, but it's the release of the tongue that lets the tone start, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so when you're articulating on the oboe, your tongue actually should touch the, the tip of the reed, uh, which is kind of a, a weird thi uh, thing to think about because if you're like a brass player, um, you're not like tonguing the inside of the mouthpiece or whatever. So uh, you wanna try, so basically uh, the first fingering that we're gonna learn is G, which is basically pressing down all three uh, of the main keys on the left hand. Yep. And then the back one? And nope, nothing no, no on the back. The back. Okay. will show. There we go. Yeah, you want to make sure that the airstream is like consistent. There we go. Yay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds kind of garbage. Oh no. Well, it's, it's but great hey. for a beginner. I, I think I was just about there. All right. So then the second fingering is A which is the two fingers on the top on the left, and then nothing, yeah. Kind of standard woodwind sort of scale. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. That didn't sound particularly to in It's the but... right fingering, unless you're like pressing. Yeah. It's right. I you just wanna... need, to, need to learn my embouchure sort of stuff. You, you want to make sure, that, yeah. Better, yeah. Awesome. And then the third fingering is B, which is just the, the yeah. Which makes makes a lot of sense. It's like playing recorder all over again. Yeah, no, it's the exact same fingering as the yeah. Well, I don't think that's right. <laughs> that's not a thing. Uh, I think you were trying to play C. Uh, it's so it's the. First, and then the first one on there. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, okay. So, so then the ending, so we've talked about the starting the note, so the ending of the note of any note on the oboe is caused by the stopping of the airstream and that can mean either um, stopping the airstream by use of the tongue or just by stopping the air without the tongue. So if you stop the air with the tongue it's more of an abrupt em ending and then when you stop it without the tongue and just stop the air then it's more of like a decaying uh, release. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can get the hang of that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Did we literally go over everything? I don't even know. I think we went over everything.
to see how out of tune I am. Oh! <laughs> the tuner here. Well, that looks like the TikTok. It's not TikTok. <laughs> Too. You want to make sure that you, that the that the oboe's coming to you, not that you're coming to the oboe. Yeah. raises the pitch by and an I was, octave. I was flat. That oh. might have been, that might have been, oh, yeah, by an octave, that makes sense. That might have been what happened. <laughs> I'm just always flat when I do <laughs> It takes a lot of... in that way yeah because it has because there's ton in the bottom of this so it protects the tip of the reed from getting hurt when it goes back in the tube yeah I don't know that I poked the hole in that that's a good idea okay so what you're gonna want to do so this is a, a pull through cloth so, and it has a little weight at the end so you're always gonna want to um, uh, keep the oboe uh, fairly upright, but when you clean out the oboe, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take the cloth. Wow. I think you might need to tilt it farther. <laughs> yeah. You make sure that it's not knotted on the on the end or anywhere. Yeah. I'll just pull it up through there. Yeah. And this gets rid of any of the condensation that we that we got out of the Yeah. And if the if the cloth ever gets stuck in the oboe, make sure to take it to uh uh, um, repair person. What is it trying to do here? <laughs> Will it stop recording? Oh, there we go. Oh. I heard it. Oh, no. <laughs> Where is it going? Yeah, there we go. Just wasn't putting it in all the way. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And, and, yeah. 
and then we can uh, disassemble the oboe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was good. I hope that we covered everything because that was really good. Wait. I think we literally covered everything. This is like four pages and oh my god. Nice. Cool. Oboe has been learned. Yes. Now I just need to get good at it. <laughs> As do we all, including myself. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Using the button because I'm.